excited to introduce you to our Omics Logic training programs in Nigeria. This program will help you see the role of big data and next generation sequencing technologies in life sciences. Omics Logic bioinformatics training is designed for everyone interested to learn and apply data science skills to study biological data sets in an effective and meaningful way. Before we get started, let me introduce you to our company vision and team. My name is Beepsha Biswas, and I am the Omics Logic Community Manager responsible for daily interaction with thousands of users that are part of a bioinformatics community managed by Pine Biotech. Let me start by introducing Pine Biotech, the company behind Omics Logic share with you details about the upcoming omics logic programs and explain how the training resources we will discuss today will be used in the upcoming training program omics logic is a program for bioinformatics training that was developed in collaboration between pine biotech and the tober bioinformatics research center what we will discuss today and throughout this program is a result of hard work by an amazing team led by company co-founders, Dr. Alfred Tauber and Dr. Leonid Brodsky. Dr. Tauber comes from a medical background and has extensive expertise in oncology, immunology, and biochemistry of inflammation, and has been recognized internationally for his generous support of many research projects and initiatives that support data science training and applications in medicine. Dr. Brodsky is the director of the Tauber Bioinformatics Research Center at University of Haifa and is an expert in bioinformatics and biostatistics. He has numerous publications in mathematics and bioinformatics and over the course of his career has developed multiple novel algorithmic approaches to biomedical data analysis. The rest of the team you see here includes experts in bioinformatics, computer science and training and some of our team will be presenting today as well. Over the course of the past several years, our team has been collaborating with a number of academic institutions around the world that have participated in content evaluation, curriculum review, and project design. As a result, the Omics Logic programs have been thoroughly evaluated and are known to lead to excellent outcomes. Importantly, the programs are designed to support students with minimal back bioinformatics background, including biology and biomedical studies majors, as well as faculty interested in bioinformatics, data science, and biomedical research. The goal of the Omics Logic programs is to provide training in bioinformatics, enabling independent research guided by mentors and peer example, developing a growing community with shared passion for data-driven research and appreciation of citizen science, enabling students, clinicians, and faculty of all backgrounds to develop novel and independent research using latest technology in life and data sciences. In this webinar, our team will introduce you to resources that will get you started on this journey. We hope that you will be able to benefit from this webinar. The objective is to get you started. So let us go first to this URL that you see on your screen, edu.t-bio.info. Uh, Dr. Mohit, if you can kindly post the link on the chat. So we would like Very for much. every one of you to go to this link and sign up. If you're already signed in and you already have an account, then please log into your account and keep um, and be logged into your account through the rest of this process because we will be showing you how to go about with the different resources during the course of this session today. And if you have been able to sign up, please put one in the chat box so that I can understand that you have actually signed up to this portal or you are already logged in. Thank you, Dr. Mohit and Aditayo for sharing the link. 
has anybody been able to sign up or log in to the portal okay so moving on as you can see you will be able to log in using your username and password or also connect using any of your social media profiles so i see already francis and somaya has uh, done this so as we progress with our session today please make sure that you are already signed into this site it is a free registration now moving on we are excited that this event has been led and organized by our dedicated team in nigeria that brings together experts who have an interest in data driven research and have all recently completed our specialized training they are now certified and ready to assist all of you in joining the program getting registered finding all the necessary resources and helping you troubleshoot any technical or conceptual challenges you come across the program will also be supported by our team in the us and india dr harpreet kaur is a certified omics logic trainer and expert bioinformatician who will guide the hands on sessions dr mohit mazumdar is our omics logic project mentor Ilya Brodsky is Spine Biotech co-founder and CEO. I will now pass it on to Ilya to talk about the increasing significance of data science in biomedical research and introduce you to the types of challenges we will be addressing in this upcoming program. Thank you very much Beepsa and let me share my screen. And welcome everyone to this webinar. It's exciting to see that so many of you were able to join. And Bipsa, as I'm going through some of these slides, please uh, be ready with the questionnaire so that we can get to know some of our participants. So uh, today we are here to discuss bioinformatics. And the natural question is, what is bioinformatics? And the truth is that bioinformatics is this intersection between informatics technologies or data science, statistical analysis and analytical approaches, and a focus on biological data. And biological data is unique data. It's not just data like uh, marketing data or finance data. There are very special types of data that we have to know how to process prepare and manage effectively when it comes to bioinformatics. So the bioinformatics approach is the intersection of all three. And a lot of people confuse bioinformatics with computer science or with biotechnology, but it's actually right there in between. So let's take a look at some of these data sets and try to think about how has the nature of data in biology changed since the uh, development of next generation sequencing technologies or high throughput technologies. Since the uh, project for the human genome, there has been an exponential growth in the types of data and the types of applications of big data in biotechnology, in uh, biological research, biomedical research, in clinical applications. So there has been this challenge of big data, which is heterogeneous or diverse types of data, which are growing in the number of samples and the size per sample. And also it is a continuous uh, inclusion of new types of variation. So we go from cell lines to animal models, to patients, now patients around the world, sequenced around different continents, different ethnic backgrounds, different diets, different conditions, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really an exponential growth of complexity. And a good way to look at this is to see how this has changed since this new pandemic. So in this new pandemic, we have seen a tremendous growth of publicly available genomes for the SARS-CoV-2 virus as compared to some of the previous pandemics like SARS, Ebola virus, MERS, and Zika. 
And what we see today is that even the general public is aware of the genomic properties like new mutations. They understand the different proteins. They understand how they interact with the host. And here we are coming from a biological or biomedical background and have now access to all of these amazing data sets that we can leverage to conduct our own research. So what types of uh, biological phenomena could be studied with omics data? When we think about omics data, we are really talking about a number of different types of omics data. For example, we can think about phenotypic data or phenomics. Phenotypic data describes the external characteristics of cells, tissues, and organisms. So we can use clinical data to collect phenomic data. We can use imaging. We can use any kind of an external characterization of whatever tissue and samples we're studying. And then we have what's called genomic data. Genomic data characterizes the DNA code. And DNA code could have a number of different variations that include single nucleotide variations or single nucleotide polymorphisms. Uh, it includes copy number variation, different types of repeats and segments that are, uh, uh, that are studied separately. Then we can also look at epigenomic data. Epigenomic data includes data that characterizes different epigenetic regulation mechanisms. Uh, for example, we can think about whole genome methylation patterns. So how is DNA methylated? Or how is the chromatin condensed or expanded so that you can actually uh, express some of those accessible regions? And that is being studied through uh, immunoprecipitation. So many different technologies. Um, and ultimately, we can also think about the transcriptomic data or data that describes gene expression. And that gene expression could be different levels of gene expression, different types of transcripts uh, as a result of alternative splicing. So you can see that just using next generation sequencing, we have access to a whole range of data types that we can study. And the key factor about all of these types of data is that all of these types of data have to be processed. So when we talk about whole exome or whole genome sequencing, when we talk about DNA methylation and ChIP-seq, RNA-seq, metagenomics, proteomics, metabolomics, one key factor in all of these data sets is they have to be prepared for analysis. They have to be processed. So we have to understand what is the data that is being collected, how to process it so that we can separate signal from noise, and then what are some of the downstream analysis options and biological interpretation. So this program that we're introducing in this webinar is going to focus on addressing all of these different topics by giving you a broad introduction to a variety of different types of omics data and giving you resources and tools so that you can learn more in depth about each one of these and understand how to apply them in the context of a practical project. So the program that we're introducing today will consist of three important elements. First one, we will have interactive sessions just like we have today. We will meet on Zoom, we will discuss some of these omics data types, and we will look at how to practically analyze such data. The second part of the program are the self-study uh, materials that you can find on that portal that Bipsa just mentioned and you have signed up. You will find there such resources as introduction to bioinformatics, transcriptomics training that includes four different courses, genomics training, metagenomics training, and many others. Importantly, these are not just theoretical materials, but they're also facilitated by practical exercises on our T-BioInfo platform. The platform is guided by artificial intelligence to enable you to conduct big data analysis research in the context of very specific types of data sets. But it doesn't end there. We also will include practical assignments in coding. So those of you that are more interested in the data science and the application of data science to these types of biological data sets, we will give you access to some practical coding exercises so that you can also leverage such practices as coding in R and Python to investigate some of these data sets. So let's take a look at how you can learn about some of these omics data sets and give you some examples that you can 
kind of experience what will happen during the program itself. So the first thing that we'll do in the program is we'll give you an introduction of some of these computational tools and data sets that you can leverage. To do that, let me go to the tBioInfo platform that we will talk about throughout this course and throughout this webinar. So if you can go together with me to server.t-bio.info, Please let me know once you are there. You will find here that you have access to many different types of omics processing pipelines, including mass spec data, structural biology data, and downstream analysis sections. For example, we'll take a look today at an example pipeline for processing RNA-seq or transcriptomic data. Once you get to this example, we're going to just do a demo. So don't worry about uploading any files. And I know that many of you don't have access to this, but you will have access once you join the program. And if you would like to have a demo account, you can go ahead and request a demo account right here using this access form. So once you start the process of analysis, you need to prepare the reads or the raw data that is coming out of the sequencer. Once you have prepared, you will find a couple of options that are available for pre-processed reads. Then we can quantify by mapping on transcripts and preparing a table of expression. And once that table of expression is prepared, you will find the results in the output section right here. So now we are ready to do downstream analysis. Now, this platform is a big part of what we are trying to do because for anyone without any technical background, you can get, get access to these advanced computational tools to study a variety of different types of data sets. So again, as Beepsa mentioned, an important part of what we are trying to do on this webinar is to get you started. We want you to sign up on these different resources that we are going to be discussing throughout this session so that when the program starts, you're all ready to get going. So hopefully by now you have signed up on the educational portal. I just showed you the practical analysis pipeline where you can request access, or if you have already joined the program registration and have completed it, that account will be sent to you. And in a few slides, I will introduce you to another resource where you can learn about coding. But let's talk about how can these different resources help you study for example, genomic data. The human genome is over 3 billion base pairs long with over 20,000 genes and many unexplored dark matter sections, junk DNA, that is still being studied. Learning about the impact of variants like single point polymorphisms, copy number variation, and even repeats is still a challenge that many teams around the world are studying and exploring. So knowing that each sample is a huge data set that has to be separated from commonly found variations and unique variations that could be associated between the variants and the phenotypes. And so to help you understand what goes into preparing such data, sequencing it, and then measuring some accumulation of mutations in conditions like cancer, or phenotype or haplotype based on population, you can find a number of different pipelines that we will discuss and that are in detail explained in the Introduction to Genomics, Genomics 1 and Genomics 2 courses. We'll also cover an important section of transcriptomics that I just showed you an example of where you will find processing pipelines, data preparation techniques, analysis and exploration of variation between different samples and such common approaches for biological hypothesis testing like differential gene expression and pathway and gene set analysis and enrichment. We'll also talk about metagenomics where we understand the type of microbiome by studying the sequences of 16S ribosomal RNA to understand the microbiome by looking at the diversity and composition between different groups of samples. So we'll actually take a look at some healthy microbiome 
for example, in a citizen science project called American Gut, and also think about how can microbiome play a role in multiple different conditions. These conditions can be subtle, like actively exercising or inactively exercising, maybe sensitivity to different types of foods, or even such diseases like cancer, when we talk about treatment, or Alzheimer's disease, when we talk about the condition of the brain and the brain microbiome or how the microbiome in the gut could be associated with the health of our mental and psychological condition. So all of these exciting tutorials and projects are described in the educational portal, and then you will have access to interactive sessions where our mentors will be describing these projects in detail and helping guide you through the process of analysis. Now, you've probably heard about another paradigm shift in the area of big data, and that has to do with machine learning, analytics, and data science. And so we understand that the challenge for many people to start getting used to this concept of data-driven research is that a lot of times we have access to data without a predefined hypothesis. But what we do have is access to a data set, tools that can help us explore patterns and then convert those patterns into a specific training for a computer to learn from. And so we've introduced a number of data science resources and coding challenges that will help you get started with R and Python. To kind of show you what that will look like, let's go to another resource that is going to be used throughout the session. So we've looked at the educational portal. We have looked at the server, big data platform. And now let's go to code.omicslogic.com. And this is also a website that we uh, use throughout the web, the upcoming program. And you can log in and create an account here for free. So once you get here, you will see a place to sign up. And once you're signed up, you will gain access to courses. So throughout this program, we'll touch on many of the uh, code uh, examples that you can then modify to make sure that once you've explored the data, you can also present your analysis results in the context of what you are trying to do with effective visualization and analytical tools. As an example, we have here a couple of courses that are for introduction to data science in R and in Python. And all of this information is linked to the different types of uh, examples that are being covered in the educational materials that we will review throughout this program. It starts from very basic stuff. You just load files, explore the files, understand different data types, and goes all the way to advanced machine learning methods that you will gain access to as you register for the program. And Beepsa will explain at the end of this session how to complete your registration so that you get access to both free and premium resources in the context of this full program. So another resource that I encourage all of you to already sign up for and try it out. So how will all of this work in the context of this program? In the context of this program, we will cover six different sessions and you will have access for the period of this uh, whole program to all of these different resources and uh, get guidance on how to use them effectively in these sessions. We'll start by introducing next generation sequencing, a major data type that has completely transformed molecular biology, biotechnology, agriculture, uh, neuroscience, oncology, and many other domains. We'll talk about how bioinformatics and big data is playing a role in biomedical research and practice. We'll then talk about the synchronous courses that are around collections of data for genomics, transcriptomics, metagenomics, epigenomics, and others. We'll cover some of these practical steps of analysis in detail. And then we'll introduce you to important project examples that you can try on your own, developing your practical skills and seeing how they're applied by experts to address specific challenges in big data sets. Importantly, these resources are all linked together. 
So what you see here is the overall process that we have tried and refined over the course of the past couple of years with thousands of participants from around the world. All of these uh, types of programs are structured in the following way. Your activity from all of these platforms, from the server platform, from the educational portal, from the coding challenges is aggregated into your individual profile. And as a group, we go through sessions where, as you can see, the yellow here represents the educational materials, the gray represents the practical analytical pipelines, and the pink right here represents coding exercises. So you'll see how all of these materials together will help you go from an observer that understands the different challenges, projects, and data types, to then practically apply them in the context of predefined examples, and then get introduced to independent projects that you can develop into a research study of your own. For example, just recently, we have done a number of programs around Africa where we had multiple participants taking a look at some of the courses like what you're looking at today, Introduction to Bioinformatics, Transcriptomics, and others, and then look at such project examples as the Ebola project and the origins and pathogenesis of the novel coronavirus. So a project that helps us explore variation at the genomic level of these pathogens and try to find association with specific phenotypes like how it spreads among the population, how it causes disease, et cetera. Importantly, we had many different types of participants. These participants included graduate students, undergraduate students, faculty, and clinicians. And in many ways, what we have created is an experience that combines multiple elements and translates into more than just a certificate that you would get from another place like Coursera or edX or maybe even your university because it is a certificate that is based on practical hands-on experience. And you take away from this experience, not just the educational understanding, but a practical resource and a community that you can continue and grow with even after the program is over. So at this time, I'm going to pass it back to our Nigeria team, facilitators Adekunle, Adetayo, and Sani Hamza, to discuss what their experience was. And I'll let Bipsa introduce you to our team in Nigeria. Please go ahead, Bipsa. Uh, thank you, Ilya, for the overview. So joining us from Nigeria, our collaborators and facilitators is Adekunle Adilowoe. He is an omics logic a trainer and a faculty at Leeds City University in Nigeria. Aditayo Aborisade is a faculty at the Department of Oral Diagnostic Sciences at Bayero University in Nigeria. And Hamza Sani is a medical laboratory scientist at the University of Lagos in Nigeria. Now, I would like to invite Adi Kunle to speak more about the program and his experience. Thank you very much, um, Bipsa. Yes, as I've been introduced, my name is Adekunle Adeluoye. I'm a faculty from League City University here in Nigeria and also a mentor with Pine Biotech. I have my background in medical laboratory sciences and currently a lecture for the medical scientists, nurses and radiographers. My area of focus is um, molecular biology and genomics where I'm currently completing a PhD degree. And I'm also presently exploring opportunities in bioinformatics and big data science. A for I have found very exciting and fulfilling since coming to join the Pine Biotech platform. I'm also currently part of the Umis Logic Nigerian team as a facilitator and program director. Pine Biotech um, has, uh, is a bioinformatics company that is working towards providing cutting edge bioinformatics research and education in partnership with several other universities are, are across the globe. And one of such is the prestigious Leeds City University here in Ibadan, Nigeria. As a previous participant and alumnus of the Pine Biotech program, I'm currently utilizing acquired knowledge taking courses in bioinformatics, transcriptomic, metagenomics to study the variation in IgM testing converting enzyme 2, that is AC2, among male and female normal as well as COVID-19 subjects, infected subjects. 
As we all know, AC2 receptor binding is what the SARS-CoV-2 virus utilizes in entering into the cells to infect the cells. As exciting as bioinformatics is, the fact is there is a computational resource gap when it comes to successfully running bioinformatics pipelines on data sets. And first is that big data science and bioinformatics are infrastructure demanding, as there is a need for high computing power and space to be able to run these pipelines. And um, just to, to, to add a perspective to that, you can imagine you have a genomics data set you want to analyze and um, it's about 300 gigabytes um, you know, in size. I mean, in this part of the world, even downloading this um, kind of data set, um, I mean, file would be a huge challenge, not to talk of processing and analyzing them. So um, this is one of the challenges we have when it comes to you know, uh, bioinformatics, I mean, co computational resources gap. Now, um, this of course means a huge investment as the gadgets and resources needed are very, very expensive. There is also the inaccessibility issues as well as the wide gap in the expertise necessary to carry on these tasks and mentoring of those coming into the feed, despite the need for these key cells. And this is where I find very, very interesting and helpful the Pine Baltics uh, cloud-based AI guidance um, server for participants to utilize in their learning journey. Aside the well-structured um, asynchronous courses and other learning resources, learners can immediately begin to have hands-on experience on big data analysis. Here on this slide is a screen shot of my own uh, personal um, project pipelines I run using the cloud-based AI-guided T-Server platform during my learning experience. So the present COVID-19 outbreak have come not only to test the scientific knowledge and advancement of the past decades, but also it has come to show how important these scientific breakthroughs such as the next generation sequencing and other molecular biology technologies have become in helping to cope with the present pandemic that threatens the very core of our human existence. And so the next important um, component that need equal, if not much more attention now, is key professionals that are able to respond adequately to these opportunities and challenges using bioinformatics. I therefore look forward to having many more professionals, university faculty and researchers, as well as students as body scientists and professionals to key into this opportunity that is available by participating in the forthcoming basic omics logic um, training part one, as well as many other training programs that is to follow towards becoming an expert in this field. Um, at this point, I will equally want to hand it over to my co-facilitator here in Nigeria, um, Dr. Aditayo um, Aburushade to say some few things also. Thank you. Hello, good, good evening, everybody. I'm Adita uh, Abushade, a lecturer in the Department of Diagnostic Sciences in Bioinvestic Canon, Nigeria. And I'm also a post fellowship senior registrar in all artificial pathology in Aminu Kano Teaching Hospital, Kano, in Nigeria. By background, I'm a dentist. And by, by, by clinic by, by based study, I'm an pathologist. I'm, because of the fact that I love to ask why. That's why I'm a pathologist. And while during the course of my study, I was also able to see the immense opportunities in data analysis and molecular diagnostics. This is what actually attracted me to bioinformatics as a field. And the fact that you can learn a lot from a patient by looking at data from the past and predict a prognosis of that same patient by the genetic signature of the patient. You can learn why they are susceptible to some diseases why they are healed at times and why they fall sick at times. So is this interest in why aspect of disease that made me become a pathologist in the first place? And I found out that bioinformatics not only helps to understand the why, but also the why not. Why are some people susceptible to some diseases? Why is there cancer in some diseases? Why do some people smoke and get down with lung cancer? And some other people smoke and don't have any iota of this Carcinogenesis. With the initial workshops I took in bioinformatics, you first have to learn the basics of data analysis. You have to learn either how, either Python, before you can start answering any project in bioinformatics. But one good thing about the PyoBiotech is that you don't need to spend months learning data analysis. You don't need to spend months learning how Python. There is already a, a cloud server 
where the only thing you need to do is follow the steps and you get the same result as if you are performing by ourselves. And at times, when you are running these pipelines in some, in, in some other websites, it might take you four or five days to just get one answer. But if you, can, if you can look at my own project pipeline, you can see that at times I run four to five pipelines daily. And that means in a couple of days, I get to get as many results as possible. I get to finish many projects. This is the advantage of this server.pipeline. And that's why we feel that for beginners, for undergraduates, for learners, for people that are just starting in bioinformatics, the bio, the, the, the server, it's a good way to start to learn. And that's why we feel that in Nigeria, we, we need a set of a, a, a set of academicians, researchers that can make use of this pipeline to forward and to, to forward research in bioinformatics and all. You also have a plethora of mentors. When I initially when I started bioinformatics, I could not find mentors to guide me in the path. I could not find people I could talk to about a research project or research item. But in, but in 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 in, in, in Toba Sava in Pi Biotech, that's not that, that, that's not the case. You have mentors both locally and internationally, so that for each research project you have assistance for each research tool for each problem for each. For, for each obstacle, we have mentors to guide you. And that's why we, we are glad that we can actually form a community in Nigeria of like-minded bioinformaticians or people that have interest and passion in bioinformaticians and genetic medicine to be able to create a um, fortify a molecular diagnostics laboratory and research. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Aditayo and Adikunle, for your insight. So the graduates from our previous programs in Africa have not only gone through this hands-on training that Dr. Aditoye just spoke about, but also applied the learning to their own research projects. For example, Dr. Ayurinde here, who is from the University of Ibadan, proposed this project on differential transcriptome expression of malaria and semi-immune adults to a plasmodium vivax uh, sporozoite challenge. In a similar way, we had Niambo, who also proposed a research project on in-depth transcriptomic analysis to determine the response to inhibition of PKNA and PKNB by M tuberculosis. So this entire training program is designed to make sure that you can first learn and then apply the logic to your own independent research projects. Here are more examples from participants of our previous programs who have also given their feedback. For example, Kingstone was part of uh, two of our previous omics logic programs in Africa last year. And he shares that he had a great experience with the program that we conducted. So the aim of the omics logic program and the training is to help you towards your goal of working on your own independent research project. And we have some example projects on the side with which you first learn, and then you can also propose your own proposal. And we will offer you the mentor support that Dr. Aditayo pointed out. So we are going to be starting from this existing resources. And in a minute, I will show you the examples on the site. So I'm sure that by now, everybody has already signed up to the server and to the EduT Bioinfo portal. If you have not already, we will also be emailing you again all of these details and you can then sign up at your own pace. So how to register for the upcoming program so that you can get access to this training, the resources and the mentor support. So I will now take you through the different steps. So we have a portal or what we call a landing page. And I'm sure that many of you must have already signed up here as you are joining today's webinar session. So this is the link again, 
once you register on this link, you would receive an email from our team in Africa. And the email address would be africa at pine.bio. So let me again post that email ID in the chat, africa at pine.bio for any questions related to this upcoming program. And as you see here, you have a form here. So if you have not already signed up, please sign up via this link. And once you're signed in, you are registered, you will receive all the details for payment via email. And once you're already signed in, you will have access to this first resource. So as we already showed you that you will get access to EduT Bioinfo, which is a first platform, right? So if you come under events, uh, you will have an event where you can see the Omics Logic Africa program. So I'll just give it a minute to load back. Okay. So now you have the Nigeria training basic. So if you're already logged into the server, you can go ahead and check out this page. It will leave you to this page right here. I am not sharing the link again in the chat because this is the link you get access to once you're already registered for the program. So once you're here, you can see there are several sections right here. First is the forum. So the forum is where we share different communication links with our participants. Moving ahead, we have the courses right here. And we also have several different projects. So the first step to sign up for this is to register here. Now, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Mohit to say a few more words. Dr. Mohit, if you can go ahead and talk some more. Thank you. Thank you, Miksha. Okay, let me share my screen. All right. Hello, everyone. A very good evening. Today, we discuss the introductory training that is designed to infer biological insights from big data and gain in-depth knowledge from guided workflows that you saw, courses, and publication-based project examples. So, Deepsha also mentioned that how we can translate from this training to working and doing a project. So, I would like to share a few slides about that. So to broadly describe the application of NGS data, these methods are commonly used in variety of biomedical research that you heard about today, and also clinical projects where large data are beginning to be more and more available. So one of the objective of the Omics Logic program is to be able to develop an independent project or gain experience from working on a project with a research team. So the next step after learning about the technology is to apply those skills to a real research project. So um, we follow a, a particular curriculum and you talk, we talked about the Omics Logic program and we learned about how this is actually working for our participants all around the globe. So to describe you this uh, in a nutshell, we are uh, what we will try to learn in this entire experience is to be to understand how modern biology is shaping is shaped by data and these analytical thinking to, to develop that and also to learn from research project examples applying advanced bioinformatics to real problems to to gain an understanding a broad understanding of how high throughput technology and omic studies work and also to gain solid grounds in omics processing, analysis, and machine learning. And in the end, when you have all this information and all these skill sets and understanding of the technology, it is to connect those dots so to explore system biology through multi-omics integration. As I, as I was telling you that the application uh, is pretty important to complete this training because you start from, you start from the understanding of these technology and then you want to do 
work on your own research idea so that idea could be about oncology could be about virology could be about neuroscience or biotechnology where you are also you also saw the application in the micro microbial world and also again because we are using these data science and machine learning techniques so that those are the research areas that we are focusing on and as you saw that these are the people who whom we have worked with uh, who whom we have worked as a research fellowship program and they came up with uh, these uh, collab uh, by collaborating amongst themselves came up with this research uh, ideas and they were able to work together as a group and come up with a, a project that has objectives results and conclusion so one of the uh, benefits of doing this and uh, like you saw several of the, these examples is to be able to complete these projects as a part of research and learn by uh, by later presenting this in prestigious conferences leading to poster presentations conferences and to start this uh, journey i mean um, you you start with the basic understanding and then you move towards uh, application and then publication and uh, so on so this is a comp so that the entire thing could be showcased in your profile uh you can put it as uh in your cv uh and connect with people whom uh, you can you have this research interest using this community uh so thank you uh, for this uh, for uh, for the time and uh, i would like to pass it on to bipsha to talk further about the program thank you thank you everyone uh thank you yeah maybe i'll just wrap this up so mohit please put back the screenshot of the last line sure so again we do have um our uh final uh kind of part of this uh webinar we would love to learn a little bit more about your background so i've started a poll where we are asking three questions. First one, what is your educational background? High school, bachelor's degree, master's degree, PhD, or other? Number two, what are your research interests? Infectious diseases, virology, oncology, neuroscience, machine learning, data science, or other? And number three, what are you looking forward to learn from this session? So from this upcoming program, uh, brush up on my bioinformatics skills, acquire knowledge about bioinformatics, or interact and collaborate with other experts in this field. So if you have uh, any comments about this webinar, about the topics that we have covered, please put your questions in the chat box. If you do not have any questions, we ask that you fill out this poll. So that way we will learn more about your background and we will be able to tailor the sessions that we are planning more to your background and interests. We will be working with our team in Nigeria to make sure that we collect this information and we share this information back with all of you so that you're aware of other participants that have joined this session today. And for those of you that have submitted your registration, you can also uh, submit your uh, request to get a recording or the recording will be posted on our social media, including on YouTube, where you can watch the full recording of the session. And of course, for any questions, as Beepsa mentioned here in the chat box, you can email us at africa at pine.bio. And there are also uh, an option to send questions in the WhatsApp group. Adetayo, would you like to mention anything else about how to reach to you uh, and how to ask any questions? Any questions can be sent to that email address at africanpower.bow or the WhatsApp group that most, most participants will have joined via the email we sent to them. Or any other channels. Our phone number, my phone number is also probably in the email email address, email messages we sent to the email addresses. So any of this, I'm always available to answer any question and resolve any queries. Thank you. So here we have a question. I am a graduate of Ecotourism and Wildlife Management, Federal University of Technology, Akure. Akure, I don't know how to say that, sorry. 
how can I implement this in ecological management and monitoring? So I think that's a very interesting question. Uh, ecological management, wildlife management, the resources that we think of as forests and untouched nature, natural reserves actually play a major role in, uh, for example, habitat for species that carry various diseases. For example, Ebola virus, HIV, uh, SARS-CoV-2 are all thought to be coming from bats or maybe through bats, through some other intermediate species. As the human population grows and we start emptying the natural habitat, uh, endangering those, we will see more and more interaction between humans and some of those species that have been up until now remote and separated from this interaction. So that direct contact is very dangerous because our immune systems are unprepared for the types of viruses that have been co-evolving with these uh, other species for thousands of years. So I think that's one important area where some of this bioinformatics and big data plays a major role and has direct relationship to the topics that you're studying, uh, Sahib. Uh, but other than that, you know, in preservation and characterization, we think, you know, humans think that we know a lot about different species out there and, you know, what they're like and things like that. And so if you read about some history of natural research, uh, you will see how uh, this estimate of how many species are out there has been constantly been upgraded by many fold from originally people thought that maybe there's a hundred thousand to you know millions today. So I think this research is ongoing and we will see more and more new interesting variation in the life around us and we will be able to learn from these new types of evidence that is collected through this type of phenotypic and molecular data about the unique uh, properties of these new species. Okay, uh, Haruna is saying in 2016, I was involved in a study that involved next generation sequencing, but we had to move our samples outside Nigeria for analysis. I would love to know the current availability of NGS services in Nigeria. Well, I think as you mentioned, uh, many people outsource uh, because there's a lack of infrastructure as was pointed out by Adekunle uh, and others that you know, requires you to maybe send your samples for sequencing and also uh, rely on experts for analysis. And so this is an attempt to build up this kind of capacity within Nigeria to make sure that you can do both sequencing. And there are several labs that I know of that do sequencing, but also, also the analysis. You know, many times when you outsource the analysis, all you get is process data back or some kind of a report. But that data contains a lot of information that typically is not reported on. So the infrastructure that we are seeking to establish with our computational resources and with training is essentially to help make that a reality in Nigeria. So we would love to learn more, Haruna, about your uh, you know, current employment and where you are so that we can coordinate how this can be done for your organization. Oseg Hale is asking what possible ways can I integrate bioinformatics in a research around environmental friendly and sustainable crop production in Nigeria? I think a very, very important topic right here. So as you know that uh, crops and uh, established crops especially have been bred over hundreds of years uh, as a result of the changes in the climate and the changes in the demand we need to adapt. And that breeding process is very time consuming, right? The selective breeding process is very time consuming. So given the uh, availability of resources, given the changes in the climate, and given the type of production levels that we expect to serve the growing population, we need to adapt. And what we know about the current crops is that, for example, we have a project on our website uh, about uh, potato crops. Uh, potato has different uh, uh, levels of tolerance for heat and for drought. And that project explores how you can study 
transcriptomic variation among the different crops to understand what might be the possible way to uh, benefit from some crops that maybe have lower production but higher tolerance or the other way around. So I think that's an insight into that question. Sahid is asking, how can you make this course available at a cheaper rate for undergraduates? Excellent question. Beepse, if you could post the link, we annually allocate about $20,000 towards scholarships. And we would love for you to take uh, this opportunity to fill out this form. It's a financial uh, assistance request where we will evaluate your background and your need. And we ask for some references from your educational coordinators or faculty to make this program more affordable for you. So if you could please post the link, fill out this form, and you can actually uh, fill that out and get a discount uh, through filling that out. Um, also, I am an animal biotechnologist, a question by Biola. And with keen interest in exploring simple and complex inheritance traits of animals. I know bioinformatics is a major key tool in solving this. I will appreciate in this workshop, a workshop can be of help. So I think that uh, exactly, you know, that's the right direction. There are simple and more complex traits. They're associated with uh, inheritance, in other words, genetic Profiling and study of genomic data could be very helpful. Uh, myself, I'm not an expert in animal biotechnology, so I would love to hear more about the specifics of your interest so we can help develop resources also related to that topic. Uh, and there are many uh, biotechnology related data sets that we will explore throughout the program. In fact, one of the pieces of this program is going to uh, different resources where you can find publicly available data sets, start exploring those and understand how other people around the world are using this kind of omics data to study a variety of different projects. So we'll go through that. And one of the places I would think of is you could go to NCBI, the National Center for Biotechnology Information, where you can find all kinds of data on these types of projects. Uh, Francis is asking, I am concluding a PhD in chemistry where I am applying machine learning to predict the impact and incidences of naturally occurring toxins in humans and environment. How can this program help? Well, I think that's an excellent start. If you're already applying machine learning to a data set based on chemical properties of different toxic molecules, what you will find is that the toxic molecules interact with the human uh, organs, tissues, cells in different ways. And I think that one part of information are the physical chemical properties of the molecules themselves. Another source of data is how that reaction happens when you try and apply them to different tissues, cells, and even animal models. So there's data like that out there. There's also gene expression data, protein expression data. So you can learn about how the interaction happens to get more insights into not only the general properties, but the actual specific properties of those molecules. So I think uh, we would love to talk more about this. If you want to reach out to us again, uh, write us an email to africa at pine.bio. Aditai was mentioning that for participants having issues with payment via Paystack, please send me an email on how we can assist you in making direct payments. So again, payments is something that is being handled by our team in Nigeria via Paystack. So if you could email them directly, you will see there are different options that they can uh, custom uh, match for, your, uh, for you to be able to do that. Um, Ikra is also asking from Pakistan, how can we register for this course in cheaper packages? So there's actually two ways, as I also uh, mentioned, you can request a scholarship, uh, which could be a significantly uh, cheaper for you to pay. But also, if you do not have the funds, there's a lot of material that we offer on all of these resources that you can gain access to for completely free of charge. So we ask that all of you that have registered on the educational portal, start exploring the Introduction to Bioinformatics course and some other courses that are free. 
on the coding platform. There are some free courses as well. And you can also get access to the platform as a demo account, also completely free of charge. So you can understand some of the conceptual steps in analyzing big data as well. So hopefully that helps. Uh, Alwal Kabir is also um, mentioning something about payments. Um, okay, so uh, uh, Adekunli is asking that I mention for Ta Rene, if you can reach out to Adekunli via WhatsApp so he can help resolve the payment by providing a dollar payment link. Um, and uh, for the course certificates, uh, yes, e each course will have a certificate and that certificate is something that you can link to. You will also get a certificate for the full program in the end as well. And so we will uh, you know, share those certificates also at the end of the program, especially for those of you that continue to work on independent projects. So uh, you will see in our blog post, many of our uh, exceptional uh, people that have done independent projects have continued to be featured by our team so that you can gain exposure. So that's another opportunity there. Ilya, right. I have a well, question here yes, uh, from Emmanuel. Uh, he says that I'm interested in metagenomics. It is a PhD student. Will this course help me to use bioinformatics to study microbes population dynamics in a polluted media that is under bioremediation while help to pinpoint enzymes involved in the degradation process and pinpoint organisms that produce specific substances that have aided the biodegradation of pollutants. So that's a research question there, Ida. Yeah, so that's an excellent question. You know, metagenomic sequencing is the approach of taking a sample directly from the environment and trying to understand species diversity and richness and compare those between different conditions. So when you speak about direct metagenomic 16S ribosomal RNA amplicon sequencing, that gives you taxonomic composition. It allows you to see what the population of microbes in a given sample looks like. So if you have a normal versus some toxic environment and you wanna compare the two, you can compare diversity. So what, how many different species you have and species richness or how abundant are specific species. Now from that comparison, you can infer some elements of what you're speaking about because ultimately if you want to understand what those species do, which is you know specific metabolites they produce, et cetera, you actually want to not only understand what genome do they have, but you also want to understand what do they produce. So you want to actually look at metatranscriptomic or metabolomic data from such environments. And that's a little bit different from just simple amplicon metagenomic data. Ultimately, we discuss a lot of these concepts in our metagenomics training courses. You can get started from the introduction to metagenomics, which is a free link, a free course. And once you cover that, you'll understand the different approaches to sequencing and what that information can give you. So I think that's going to be a good start. And then you can find the appropriate data set to ask downstream questions, you know, depending on what kind of data set you have access to. Okay, well, let's briefly review the poll results. It looks like the majority of you have a master's degree of some kind. And the second largest category are bachelor degree holders. Uh, in terms of research interest, it seems that predominantly infectious diseases uh, is the largest group here, which is exciting to know because I think it's a pressing issue. Obviously now in the time of the pandemic, this is an important one as well. And in terms of what you're looking forward to learn from the session, it looks like many of you are interested in acquiring knowledge about bioinformatics. And that means that many of you are probably just getting started. So I think that's exactly what we intended for this webinar to do. So it's great to see that you are all uh, falling under this category. Again, thank you for joining today. This is something that we have been looking forward to. We will have another upcoming webinar. So you can register in the link that was provided by Adetayo. Uh, in that link, you will see that you can 
uh, you will start receiving emails. So look out for the next email about another free webinar that will be coming up. And in that next webinar, we will hope to do a little bit more hands-on. So all of you that have joined today, this is not gonna be a repeat of the same thing. It's gonna be a little bit more practical. And please, please complete the introduction to bioinformatics, which is a free course by that time, so that we can have a more fruitful discussion in our next webinar. And as Aditya mentioned here, that's gonna be January 11th. So just in a few days. All right, thank you.